What's up, Giants fans? It is finally um, post-draft, Giants report number three. And um, basically, I'm going to talk about the draft and um, our current depth chart and how we're looking and um, stuff like that, just reactions in the draft. And, you know, obviously, I was a Rosen guy if you watched my previous videos. Um, we took Saquon Barkley like most of you wanted and expected. I didn't believe it. I thought it was all just a bunch of nonsense and that Dave Cuddleman was going to take a quarterback. But you know what? That's why I'm posting the video now. I wanted to digest this whole thing and kind of give it a week or so and um, you know reflect on the Giants pick even more. And, you know, I understand it. I, I'm starting to get it now. I understand how good Saquon Barkley is. I've always understood how good Saquon is. So uh, we'll dive into that right away. So uh, let's get into this. The New York Giants select Saquon Barkley, running back, Penn State. So there it is, second overall, and I would say about 80% of her fan base wanted Saquon Barkley. You got what you wanted, and although I'm in the uh, minority there, I'm in, I'm in the 20%. Um, you know, as I said, I'm starting to get it. I, I am. I mean, I, I love Eli Manning. I'm going to be on record as saying that. I love Eli. He's my favorite athlete. I love him off the field, on the field, and he's just a great role model overall. And, you know, I want Eli to play forever. If I could sign up to have Eli Manning as my quarterback for the rest of my life, I would love it. And I've watched pretty much every Giant game since 2006, and I've never seen anyone else outside of that Geno Smith game play quarterback for the New York Giants. So life after Eli is a weird thing, and hopefully drafting Saquon Barkley can extend that for another year or two. Um, we know Eli is starting for the team this year. I believe that this will be his last year as a Giant. If I had to make a guess, I hope I'm wrong. But, you know, there's uh, not much dead cap space if they cut him after this year and they save a lot of money. They would definitely try to restructure his contract unless Eli has a great year, of course. But enough of that. Let's get on to Saquon Barkley. So when I evaluate a draft pick, I look at two things. Obviously, their overall talent as a player and be our uh, need for the position. So do I think the Giants necessarily needed a running back? No, because I'm a big Wayne Goleman believer, and Jonathan Stewart is, you know, although he's like 31 years old, he's still not that bad. He could definitely split carries with somebody. And people throw the term generational talent around a lot, but when you look at Saquon Barkley, I mean, that's, that's a guy you can really use it on. I mean, people say that they haven't seen a prospect as good as Barkley since, like, Adrian Peterson or someone someone of that nature. And I think they're right. You know, you look at Barkley, I mean, the things he can do, his agility, his speed, his power, he can jump over people. He could just do it all. He's a great pass catcher. I mean, the things he brings to an offense is incredible. And, you know, hopefully with a good mind like Pat Shermer, um, you know, he'll be able to maximize the talent of Barkley, which is what I'm worried about. Our offensive line, although improved, I still believe it's going to be probably somewhere between 20 and 25th ranked in the league, hopefully. Um, you know, people who expect it to be top 10, I would not bank on that at all. But, you know, when you have a guy as dynamic as Saquon Barkley is, you A, have to use him correctly, and B, hope that he can stay healthy. And in the last video, I said how I think there are only a couple games or Barkley had over 20 carries or something like that. So hopefully he's durable enough to handle that in the NFL. He doesn't have an injury history as far as I'm concerned. And, you know, as Dave Goodman said, he was the cleanest prospect he's seen since Peyton Manning. And we all know how great Peyton Manning was. So, um, you know, if Goodman hits on this, um, definitely a great pick. But you have to maximize how good Barkley can be. When you watch his college highlights, obviously he's the best player on the field by far. And I also love how there's no off-field issues, you know, with Barkley. Um, you know, he's, he seems like a great kid and wanted to be part of this organization, which you really want. And ultimately, when you, you know, not only pick a guy second overall, but when that guy's a running back, there's immense pressure on Saquon Barkley. You know, I'd, I'd hate to put that on him, but I'm sure he's aware of it. And, you know, he seems like he's a good kid that can get that kind of stuff out of his mind, but... The expectations for this kid have to be insane. And, you know, when you take a guy that high, I mean, you're basically saying that he has to be a Hall of Famer and has to be one of the top, I would say, 10, maybe even five running backs of all time. And, you know, when you look at his tape, I mean, he could definitely do it. I mean, there's there's nothing this guy can't do. Um, even a good pass protector as well, which is, you know, sometimes overlooked. Um, not by the uh, NFL scouts, of course, but some fans overlook that part. 
Um, but yeah, I mean, Barkley is just, he's as clean as you would want a prospect to be. My argument was, I don't think the running back position should be as valued as some of you made it sound. I mean, I think it's kind of easy to find running backs nowadays. Um, you know, there's a lot of good running backs in this league. Uh, Kamara, David Johnson, Kareem Hunt, Jordan Howard, guys like that, that were taken, um, you know, in the middle of drafts. So for me, I was, you know, not on board with it completely, but there's nothing wrong with Saquon Barkley. Let me just be honest. I mean, as I said, if they use him right, the pick will be worth it, and he'll win the Giants a lot of games. So I'm excited for it. I hope him and Odell put on a huge show for New York and become this dynamic duo for the next five to seven years. And uh, that's pretty much it. I mean, I'm just really excited for this kid. I hope that they uh, they hit on this pick, and I'm rooting for him, definitely. I didn't want him, but I'm rooting for him. He's a giant now, and um, I'll root for him as long as he's wearing big blue. New York football giant select. Will Hernandez oh! from UTEP University. I'm just going to go ahead and say this was my favorite pick of the draft by the Giants. Um, you know, after the first day, uh, I, I didn't really watch, like, the last 10 picks of the first round. I kind of checked out. Um, you know, I saw names like Lamar Jackson win, stuff like that. Then I saw Giants fans on Twitter saying, you know, we should get Will Hernandez tomorrow. And I was like, oh, my God, Will Hernandez is still left? I did not expect it, honestly. He is a first-round talent, and I'm really surprised he lasted this long. And I'm pretty sure the Browns, who were the pick before us at 33, I think they also took a guard, not Will Hernandez, obviously, and I was really concerned they would take him. But, uh, you know, they passed on him, and we were able to get Will Hernandez. And I thought it was a great pick, not only for the value, but for the, you know, position need. I mean, we all went into this draft knowing the Giants um, were going to take an offensive lineman. I was expecting multiple offensive linemen, but uh, anytime you can get a guy like Will Hernandez, who should be a really solid guard for the next decade, um, hopefully all with the Giants, um, you know, you you got to take advantage of that pick, especially for how, you know, your line isn't the most talented in the league. Um, you know, he'll probably compete with Omame for the left guard spot. But I'm, I'm guessing that Will Hernandez is going to be a week one starter for this team, whether it's um, left guard or right guard. And, you know, he's a mauler. He's the type of guy that Dave Gunnaman likes, uh, 327 pounds, as you can see. And, you know, he's the type of guy, you know, when you watch his highlights, when he finishes a block, he really gets his money's worth. I mean, he will put you into the ground and keep you there. And that's the kind of guy I like. You know, I like guys that are mean. I think I like read somewhere that Will Hernandez just doesn't like people in general. And you know what? That's what you want on your offensive line. You don't want someone who's friendly. You want a guy who's going to absolutely obliterate your opponent. And, you know, I like that pick. I like this pick a lot. Um, you know, as I said, did not expect him to be there. So I think Gentleman did a great job of addressing the offensive line and um, making sure Will Hernandez was a New York Giant. The New York football giant select, Lorenzo Carter, linebacker, Clemson. I still find it funny how they said he was from Clemson even though he went to Georgia. I don't know who screwed that one up there, but um, <laughs> tough look for Chris Canny. Um, so Lorenzo Carter, I'm, a, I'm also a big fan of this pick. This is my second favorite pick that we had, um, you know, once again, based off value and position need. Um, the Giants are a team that seems to never draft linebackers, so taking one in the third round was pretty surprising. Um, but I was really happy with it. I mean, you see here, ran a 4-5-40 at the combine. He's 6'5 and 250 pounds. I mean, that's like... Jason Pierre Paul type of freak stuff, you know what I mean? And, you know, he has that Michael Strahan gap in his teeth, and, you know, you know what? Michael Strahan was one of our best defensive players ever, so any way you can emulate that, we'll take it. Uh, I'm excited, though. I mean, having James Betcher as his defensive coordinator will find creative ways to use Carter. He's good at setting the edge. He can, you know, rush the quarterback with that speed. He can get around, um, you know, big offensive tackles, and... He could really be a big impact player for us this year. I expect him to see the field a lot. And, you know, I don't know what he's going to amount to, but, um, you know, I think for what was left on the board at that time and the, you know, the, the position need, I thought Lorenzo Carter was a great pick. Your New York football giant select, B.J. Hill, defensive tackle, NC State. So just a few picks after the Carter pick, um, due to the Jason Pierre-Paul trade with the Buccaneers, we took B.J. Hill, a defensive tackle from NC State, 
And I wasn't too familiar with him. I mean, obviously, um, Bradley Chubb's going to get all the attention there. But people said, I mean, I, I, they said it, I think, during the, um, you know, during the pick that he was overlooked because of Chubb and people didn't realize how good B.J. Hill actually was. And at first, I was puzzled with the pick because I figured, hey, you know, we don't really need a de- defensive lineman. We have Snacks Harrison. Uh, we have Dalvin, uh, Dalvin Tomlinson. We have that, uh, you know, Josh Morrow guy who's already suspended. But I think the way the league is moving is, you know, you need to have, you know, five, six, even seven fresh bodies to rotate in and out on defensive lines. And, you know, we saw the Eagles do it, and we see a lot of good teams do it. And, you know, we saw the last couple years with JPP and Olivier Vernon were playing, I think, somewhere like in the 90s um, percent of snaps. And it was putting a lot of wear and tear on their bodies, and that's why ultimately they were either ineffective or hurt the last couple of years. Um, you know, defensive linemen should be playing somewhere between 75 and 80 percent of the time. You don't want to wear them out too much, and I think that's what the Giants were doing with them the last couple of years. So, you know, taking B.J. Hill and obviously taking R.J. McIntosh a couple of rounds later, it was a little puzzling at first, but once I thought about it, it was like, you know what, I get it. Um, you need to build depth in this league at important positions. And, you know, when you have the depth at offensive line and defensive line, it's a big thing. I mean, big guys definitely help. And when you have talented big guys, it makes the game a lot easier. And, you know, we as Giant fans should know that for sure. Um, based off our Super Bowl wins, our defensive line was dominant. And how crappy our offensive line has been the last couple of years, you know, we might have had an offensive, uh, a lot of offensive talent, but our offensive line would negate all that because they could not, um, you know, hold Eli up upright and uh, it put a big, um, you know, put a big hold on our offensive potential. The New York Giants select Kyle Lauletta. Oh, quarterback. Now we have something going on here. So although the Saquon Barkley pick shocked me a bit because I thought they were a good quarterback, this pick shocked me the most. Uh, fourth round pick Kyle Lauletta out of Richmond. I've never heard of him, honestly. As I said, I'm not like a big college football fan. People say that Loletta was really overlooked in this draft. I mean, um, that report came out that some GMs had him as like a second round talent. And I don't think the Giants' intentions were to take a quarterback, but as Dave Gettleman put it, uh, the value was too good to pass up on at that point. Um, You know, I'm sure some of us never heard of Loletta because he went to Richmond, not the biggest school. But, of course, I watched his highlights, and uh, his senior bowl was incredible. Um, You know, watching that, everything was just so pinpoint. I mean, I think he just came in and threw, like, two or three touchdowns and just looked like a terrific quarterback. So, at that point, you can't even blame it on his competition level because, at that point, you're playing against, you know, the best guys in your class. Um, But, you know, this pick was definitely a big middle finger to Davis Webb and the Davis Webb believers. Uh, If you watch my previous videos, you know I'm not really – on the um, bandwagon for Davis Webb. I don't really think he's that good, and people definitely, um, you know, overvalue him. And I think right now you have to put Loletta over Davis Webb, even though he's just a rookie. Um, You know, he just really impressed me. Um, You know, even though he was playing less competition, uh, Loletta still looks like a more poised and, uh, you know, a quarterback with a a better skill set compared to Davis Webb. I've seen some comparisons for Loletta, um, some crazy, uh, some not so good. I mean, I've heard Jimmy Garoppolo thrown out there, and I think Garoppolo is really, really good, so not sure about that. I've heard Drew Stanton in there, um, and they they do throw very similar, so, I mean, I'll give them that. But, you know, when I see Loletta, I kind of get like a Matt Stafford vibe from him. Um, Obviously, he doesn't have the rocket arm that Stafford has. But I think people kind of undervalue Loletta's arm. Um, You know, obviously not a Josh Allen type of arm, but I think it's an arm that can get it done in the NFL. And, you know, playing in the Meadowlands is is tough with the wind and everything. But uh, Loletta should be able to get the job done. And I don't know if the Giants' plan is to have Loletta be Eli's successor um, you know, but we got to we got to realize that Davis Webb was Ben McAdoo's pick as I've always said, and this one was picked most likely by Pat Shermer. So, um, you know, Pat Shermer has a great history with quarterbacks, guys that, 
you know, weren't really that talented and kind of just came out of nowhere. Um, you know, he, he made Case Keenum a lot of money this year uh, with Denver um, when he was coaching him with Minnesota. So, you know, I, I really trust um, I trust his judgment to find a good quarterback. And if Shermer has a couple years to work with uh, Loletta, uh, he could turn him into something special. So, I mean, I'm excited to see what he does. And I'm really excited to watch preseason football for the Giants, which is something I never thought I would say. But watching the Webb versus uh, Loletta battle in preseason should be really interesting. So to recap, it's a weird pick. I didn't expect it, but he looks pretty talented. So, um, you know, I, I trust Shermer, and he definitely has a track record to uh, prove that. And you know what? As I said with Saquon Barkley, I'm excited to see what he can do. So in August, when the uh, preseason comes around, we'll see what Loletta's made of. And uh, I'm expecting a lot from him, honestly. I hope he does a good job. He seems like a good kid and, and was always, uh, you know, counting out his whole life and uh, you know, he's a good story. Not not like a Baker Mayfield type story, but uh, close enough. So I'm rooting for him for sure. The New York Giants select R.J. McIntosh. Defensive back, Miami. And Defensive tackle. Defensive tackle. Well, not a good first impression for Alec Ogletree pronouncing the uh, wrong position for McIntosh. But um, as we get into him, uh, he's he's kind of like B.J. Hill in a way. Like, you know, for me at least, he um, you know, was not a guy I expected to take. I thought for sure we were going to take a right tackle in this draft. I do not trust Eric Flowers at all. And, you know, Chad Wheeler was a guy who started towards the end of the year for us and was pretty effective. But, um, you know, you'd like to have, you know, more guys competing for that spot. Um, but you look at McIntosh, just another, you know, big body and a, a, a good player who was uh, overlooked in this draft. And you put him on this defensive line with a lot of good names, Snack Harrison, uh, V.J. Hill, of course, who we just got, Dalvin Tomlinson. Um, but, you know, we're there's definitely a lot of talent on this defensive line. You can never have too much of it. That's how we won our past two Super Bowls. And, um, you know, I don't really know much about McIntosh, obviously. Um, but I, uh, you know, I trust the Giants with making this pick and the Giants have always had pretty good success with defensive linemen, even though it was, uh, Jerry Reese, but, um, you know, from a culture standpoint, we're pretty good at detecting defensive line talent. So hopefully McIntosh has a successful rookie year and finds his way onto the field. So I'm going to try and go through this real quick because the video is uh, lasting kind of long, but, um, I put together a quick depth chart for the Giants currently. Um, and I'm excited for it. You know, Eli Manning, Saquon Barkley splitting with Jonathan Stewart most likely. I mean, I expect Barkley to get like 80% of the reps, but, um, you know, Stewart's going to be worked in there. Odell, Shepard, Roger Lewis, Cody Latimer. I like that pickup, especially for uh, special teams purposes. Um, Evan Ingram, who was probably going to be even better than last year, which is scary. Red Ellison, I'm a big fan of. And on the offensive line, you know, some, some different faces. We see some different jerseys there. Nate Solder, the big pickup at left tackle. Will Hernandez, um, Patrick Omame was added. So definitely much improved there. And you know what? Overall, I mean, if this offense clicks, it can be special. Um, I don't know if they'll grasp onto the playbook right away. It's a new offense, of course. But, man, if this team, um, you know, hits their, their max potential, it could be scary. So uh, it's a lot to ask for, but definitely a possibility with uh, the talents of Odell, Barkley, guys like that, and even Sterling Shepard, who I think is overlooked, Evan Ingram. Um, you know, just a lot of big playmakers on this team, so it's exciting for sure. Now, defensively, I love our front seven, honestly. Um, you know, when you look at the defensive line and linebackers, it's really exciting. I mean, Damon Harrison's incredible. Dalvin Tomlinson's entering his second year. B.J. Hill, a lot of potential there. R.J. McIntosh. Uh, you move O.V. to linebacker with Kareem Martin, who's an athletic freak. You have Al Ogletree, who we traded for. Hopefully, B.J. Goodson can stay healthy. And if not, we have Lorenzo Carter, who's also an athletic freak. Um, the secondary, I mean, you know, it's pretty thin. You look at Janoris Jenkins coming off an injury. Eli Apple, who seems to have his head on straight right now, so we'll see how that pans out. William Gay, who's been playing, it seems like, forever. We got him from Pittsburgh. And the speedster, Teddy Williams. Don't know much about C.J. Goodwin. We just got him from the uh, Cardinals, I believe. They released him. Um, Landon Collins, um, you know, hopefully his forearm injury 
is all settled by the time uh, preseason comes around. And then the uh, other safety spot, it's between Darian Thompson, Andrew Adams, and Michael Thomas. I would like Andrew Adams to get it. I liked what he did for us a couple years ago, and I felt like he was not really given a fair chance last year. So uh, we'll see how that position plays out. But it's, it's an exciting defense. I mean, it's going to create a lot of havoc, and, uh, you know, it should be fun. So uh, if James Betcher is as good as advertised, it'll be a, a good defensive year for us. So that'll just about do it. Uh, if you're still watching and watch the whole thing, I appreciate it. Please like and subscribe. Um, I do these giant videos a lot, so if you're a giant fan and, you know, you liked my opinion and stuff like that, uh, I'll definitely come out with more of these. And um, as for the draft and for the season coming up, I'm, I'm really excited. You know, the Giants got a lot of talented players in this draft. Not positions we needed necessarily, but guys that fell down the board. And, um, you know, it should be a really fun year. So, uh, you know, a lot of optimism right now for us. And, um, you know, God willing, uh, most of the guys will stay healthy. And, um, you know, I'll make another video probably in a few months um, as uh, preseason rolls around. So, as always, please leave a comment and, uh, you know, tell me what you would, you know, grade the Giants and uh, how you think they did uh, with the draft and, uh, you know, just who they picked up overall this offseason, your impressions of Dave Gettleman, stuff like that. And you can throw in a record prediction as well. So, um, you know, I like hearing those. And uh, I'll get into the whole record prediction stuff next video. So, thanks for watching.